evening. This is the um, Zoning Board of Examiners and Appeals, uh, December 10th, 2020 meeting. Will the secretary please call the roll? Ellen McKay. Here. Dave Hale. Here. Monica Emerton. Here. Jonathan Lang. Here. Dale Smythe. Here. Jackie Savina. Here. Skylar Quinn. Here. Thank you. Next item on the agenda are the minutes. We have minutes for Thursday, November the 12th, 2020. Can I have a positive motion, please? Okay. Moved by Monica. Is there a second? Is Dale seconded? Dale, yeah. Thank you. Are there, is there any objection to um, the minutes? Seeing none, uh, the minutes are passed. And we'll move on to the special order of business. Are there any disclosures this evening? Jonathan abstained. Up for abstaining? This is Dave Hale. I'm going to have to abstain. I wasn't uh, present at the last meeting. Okay. And Jonathan? Uh, yes, the same for me. I'm going to have to abstain. I was not present at the last meeting. Any other disclosures? Okay, now to go. Next item up is the consent agenda. Um, there's only one item on the consent agenda. Um, resolution for uh, resolution 2020-013 related case 2020-0127. Uh, Can I have a positive motion on the consent agenda, please? Monica has made a motion. Monica Amberton. <clears throat> Board member Amberton has made a motion. Is there a second? This is Skyler. Second. Thank you. Um, does anyone wish to pull this item from the consent agenda for further discussion? If not, um, is there any objection? to the consent agenda. Seeing none, the consent agenda has passed. No um, appearance requests this evening, no unfinished business, uh, no, nothing on the regular agenda. So that brings us to the public hearings. The public hearing for this evening, there's just one case and it's a, a variance and um, I need to explain the procedure to be followed for this variance. Uh, the board shall hear and rule on any objections to the sufficiency of notice. Staff present an out, a brief outline of the variance <coughs> board members and the applicant may then ask questions of the staff through the chair. The applicant has a total of 10 minutes to present their case and may reserve time for rebuttal. Throughout the proceeding, the burden of proof rests upon the applicant to convince a board by a preponderance of evidence that the variance should be granted. The board members and the staff may then ask questions of the applicant through the chair. 
The hearing then shall then be open to public testimony. Representative of groups have five minutes. Individuals have three minutes. Time is kept by the secretary. The display at the front, and I don't know if you can, if everyone can see it or not, if everyone is looking at the stream, but there is a display here, <laughs> and it's green to within one minute of the time allowed, and then it will turn yellow, and at this time you should begin to sum up your testimony. At the end of the time allowed, the light will turn red, a tone will sound. All persons who testify may be questioned by the board members, the staff, and the applicant. On the conclusion of the public testimony, the staff, followed by the applicant, shall have the right of rebuttal. The chair will then close the public hearing and the matter rests with the board. Any action by the board shall require the favorable vote of a majority of the fully constituted board. The fully constituted board shall include all members of the board, including vacancies not excused for conflict of interest. And so there are nine regular members and it takes five members uh, for uh, anything to be uh, passed. For a variance to be granted, all eight standards must be met. Every final decision of the board shall clearly state on its face that it is a final decision with respect to all issues involved in the case and that the parties have 30 days from the date of mailing or other distribution of the decision to file an appeal to superior court. All right. With that, the first case is case 2020-0135. Michael and Christy Loughton are the petitioners. And I see that we have uh, the petitioner on. So um, will the staff please describe the notice given in this case? Yes, thank you. On October 21st, 2020, a total of 123 public hearing notices were mailed in accordance with the procedures of Anchorage Municipal Code, Title 21, Chapter 3, Subsection 020H Notice. Are there any objections to the sufficiency of notice in this case? Seeing none, will the um, staff please present the case? Thank you. The subject parcel is approximately 1.3 acres uh, and is within the R6 zone, uh, so it's low density residential uh, one acre zone of the city. Uh, the request is for uh, to allow a barn, paddock, and treehouse to encroach into your required yard setbacks. <coughs> this lot is triangular in shape. Uh, it's a corner lot. So there is a primary front setback of 50 feet, a secondary front setback of 25 feet, and then a side setback of 25 feet. The barn encroaches 12.4 feet into the required 50 foot primary front setback. The paddock, which is a fenced area for animals adjacent to the barn, extends to the primary front property line and encroaches approximately 16 feet into the 25-foot secondary front setback. The treehouse encroaches 12 and a half feet into the primary front setback and 15.9 feet into the side yard setback. On page 50 of the materials included in the packet for this agenda item, there's an as-built that shows the location of these accessory structures. Uh, the barn and the paddock are on the northeast corner of the lot, and the treehouse is at the southwest corner of the lot. The encroachment was discovered during a zoning compliance evaluation for a building permit applied for by the property owner to construct an addition. The accessory structures were built in the 1990s, and since they were constructed, uh, the property has had three different landowners, uh, and there's been different as-built surveys before the encroachment was discovered uh, with the recent building permit application. Six residents submitted letters of support for granting the variance. Uh, no agency has submitted comment uh, or they submitted a comment of no objection to granting the variance. 
Uh, in order to approve the variance, the application must substantially meet eight standards. The department has reviewed the applications and has the following findings for consideration by the board. And I'll go through each standard individually briefly. Standard A is not met. The subject parcel is not affected by any extraordinary physical circumstances, such as streams, wetland, or topography. And I'll, I'll try to be more cognizant of being close to the microphone. Uh, the petitioner's lot is similar in size to other lots in the subdivision. Uh, however, the lot, as mentioned, is triangular in shape, and it is a corner lot. Uh, and the applicant did note that the relocation of the barn uh, may cause some of the drainage for the property to be affected. Standard A is not met. There are no exceptional physical circumstances, and strict application of the code would not create undue hardship or deprive the petitioner of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties in the same zoning district. Uh, in the application, the petitioner notes that nearby properties have accessory structures near the road, uh, but they do not mitigate the fact of the petitioner's encouragement. Uh, standard C is not met. Uh, the accessory structures were constructed by a previous owner. Uh, however, the current property owner could have noted the encouragements prior to purchasing the property. Standard D is met. Given the character, history, and current zoning of the neighborhood, the granting of this variance will not adversely affect the use of adjacent property. Uh, neighboring property owners will retain the ability to make full lawful use of their land. Uh, and several neighbors have submitted written comment stating that uh, the structures add beneficial character and charm to the neighborhood uh, and that they were opposed to their removal. Standard E is met. The R6 zoning district uh, is intended to protect and enhance those physical and environmental features that add to the desirability of large lot residential living. Granting this variance will not permit a use that is other than what is already permitted under Anchorage Municipal Code Title 21. And the photos in the application show that the accessory structures are well maintained uh, and fit in with the surrounding neighborhood. Standard F is met. Uh, the encroachment and use of the barn, paddock, and treehouse will not result in negative or adverse impacts to the health or safety of the people of the municipality of Anchorage. Uh, the encroachment does not affect public utilities, facilities, or environmentally sensitive areas. Standard G is met. Uh, the standard is not applicable to accessory structures of a, a single family residence in private ownership. And standard H is partially met. Uh, the variance would not allow for an expansion of the existing encroachments. It would allow for continued use of the property in the same manner as today and, and has it, as it has been used uh, for, since the 1990s when the, when the accessory structures were built. However, there is room on the property for the structures to be relocated that would not require a variance. Given these findings, uh, the department recommends denial of the variance because standards A, B, and C are not met, standard H is partially met, and standards D, E, F, and G are met. However, if after a public hearing, uh, the board may find that all eight standards are substantially met, then approval should be subject to the following conditions, uh, and those are listed on page five of the materials that were included in the packet for this agenda item. Uh, that's the end of my staff report, and I'm available for questions. Thank you. Are there any questions of staff by the board? Ms. Emerton. Yes, thank you. Uh, through the chair, I guess I'm curious on the tree house um, that encroaches. I know a lot of times when we grant a variance, um, they are allowed to use that same footprint uh, for any use they might want. Would that be the same for a tree house? Like, so could that footprint then be used to build like a shed in that same area?
Uh, Commissioner Emerson, uh, I would, if the variance is being granted specific to the treehouse, so if, if they wanted to tear the treehouse down and put a shed, then they would need to apply for another variance. Thank you. Are there any other questions by the board members? Seeing none. Are there any questions of staff by the applicant? No, ma'am. Thank you. Will the applicant or the applicant's representative please present your case? Absolutely. Good evening, Chairman, members of the board, municipal planning staff, neighbors, friends, and members of the public. First off, thank you for this opportunity to present our request for a dimensional variance for our barn, our tree house, and our paddock, located in the Ptarmigan Roost subdivision address 16101 Windsong Drive. We expect to send a special thank you to our neighbors, uh, Mr. Tom Cup, Ms. Amanda Jensen, and Senator Roger Holland, along with six neighbors who have taken the time to prepare letters of support and to, to be or to present uh, testify in support of our application. We are truly grateful for your contribution. We also acknowledge the planning staff and assistance they have rendered in preparing us for the meeting. My name is Christy Lawton and my husband here is Michael. This application for a variance has been prepared because we learned of a non-conforming status on the structures on our property when we submitted an application for a building permit for an accessory dwelling unit on November 6th of 2019. We fell in love and purchased the property on July 20th of 2018. Michael and I are lifelong public servants and government employees. Michael's mother, Adele, lives with us in the new ADU and helps full-time with caring for our family. The structures on our property were apparently built in the 1990s, long before we purchased the property, and we now understand them to be non-conforming due to zoning that took effect in April of 1984. From 1990 to today, there have been three different landowners and at least three different as-built surveys, including one that was performed August 7th of 2001 and the one prepared July 16th, 2018, in which we relied before purchasing the property four days later on July 20th of 2018. None of the surveys noted any encroachments into the 1984 setbacks for any of the structures except for the as-built dated November 25th of 2019 that was prepared with the benefit of new GIS municipality data that illustrate the conflict. It's very important to note that the Ptarmigan Roost subdivision was approved by the Anchorage Borough Planning Commission on June 16th of 1971, and the relative protective covenants are still in effect and govern this track of time during construction. The covenants run with the land. They predate the 1984 zoning. They were enforced for 25 years and have been automatically extended and cover the time that these structures were built and have not been changed or superseded. The planning department did not consider the subdivision or covenant in its evaluation of our application. We understand that the planning department is recommending denial for a request because it has determined that three of the eight standards of the regulation have not been met in our application. We disagree and present the following facts for the board's thoughtful consideration. We argue that the property does have exceptional and extraordinary physical circumstances, and those circumstances are not applicable to other land in the same zoning district. These include the fact that the property is triangular shaped, and while it has an average slope of approximately 6%, which is not a particularly significant grade, it does in fact contribute to limiting the site for a suitable location to move the barn or paddock. We are further limited by our well setback radius, our retaining walls, our driveway, and existing um, utilities that further, further narrow the usable space. The design of the home, the garage, the driveway, and the barn are currently situated to minimize the disturbance and to retain the natural elevation and contours to the greatest extent possible. The treehouse is situated on old growth trees and it adds character and outdoor recreation. Further, the current drainage design was developed to avoid adversely impacting neighboring properties, downstream properties, and public infrastructure. The paddock encroachment measurements are not identified by any as built moving, move, moving or removing the structures in order to comply with the 1984 rezoning ordinance 
would upset the established balance, the usefulness, the value, exceptional and particular qualities that make this a desirable home, and it would conflict with the Ptarmigan Roof Subdivision Protective Covenant. We also disagree with the Planning Department findings for Factor B, that there are actually exceptional physical circumstances associated with this property and the strict application of the code would in fact create an undue hardship and deprive us of rights enjoyed by other properties in the same zoning district. We offer the following to support our argument. Removal would deprive us of the use and enjoyment of the structures, which were three vitally important reasons why we purchased the home. In removing the barn creates an equally burdensome and exceptional financial hardship because technically it's unreplaceable. Given current costs to rebuild or move, which at the time of construction was estimated at $55,000, under today's costs would be at least three times that. Removing the barn would diminish the taxable value in our overall investment in the property. Removing the barn would also expose the property, impose on our right to privacy, and our home would be subject to increased road noise and views of traffic. Moving or removing the barn would destroy much of the natural established vegetation and would expose the area to erosion, and moving it would require changing access to the property. And as stated before, due to the limited usable space, it's unlikely that a suitable replacement location for the barn of its size and its amenities could be constructed again contrary to the planning department's assessment. The paddock was originally intended to house horses and has space for three animals inside the barn. While this is not, this was the intended original purpose of the barn, it's not used to house livestock currently. We wish to maintain the usability of the paddock for our future and the future owners of the property. In terms of road expansion issues, there are no public municipality plans to widen either Windsong Drive or Sandpiper. In relation to the other properties, our neighbor at 16136 Sandpiper Drive obtained a dimensional variant very similar in nature to the one that we're requesting here. Back in 1993, to one, allow an existing house to encroach into the required 50-foot front setback, and two, to allow a detached garage to be built into the required 50-foot front setback. A variance granted would allow us to enjoy the same rights and interest in the real property enjoyed by other homeowners in the Ptarmigan Roof subdivision under its protective covenants. Other homeowners in the subdivision are likely and unknowingly also infringing on the 1984 rezoning setbacks. They have not been notified of non-conforming status and continue to enjoy the property rights, benefits, and protections of the covenant. The variance, if granted for the structure, does not change the character of the zoning district where the property is located. The property is already subject to protective covenants in the Ptarmigan Roof subdivision, which only deviates slightly from the zoning ordinance, but do substantially alter the usefulness, the safety, and the value of the property. We're not responsible for the placement of the structures, and this is not a self-imposed hardship. We simply sought to further improve the utility of the property and applied for a permit and discovered a problem. Contrary to the planning department's finding, we actually could not have done any more than we did in terms of due diligence to become aware of the non-conforming status of the structures. Because according to the planning department, the structures on the property were apparently built in the 1990s, although the actual date is unknown. The actual date is unknown because there are no original building permits available through the city for our principal residents or any other structures or for any neighboring residences in the subdivision. We also have been told that the municipality building and zoning records in the early 90s were purged. Additionally, the Tarmigan Roof Subdivision Architectural Control Committee has been disbanded and the subdivision division records can't be located. The title company at the time of our purchase had no records that would have flagged the issue. The only records that were part of the title package included the subdivision plat and covenant. We received no disclosures and purchase documents and was not notified by bank officials, nor received any notification from the municipality after the ad built completed after the purchase of the residence. No neighbors have levied any complaints we were truly unaware and we had no way to discover in advance that we would have to make a choice of exercising our right to improve the property with living space for our grandmother by giving up the barn, the paddock, and our son's treehouse. The purchase of the value of the property was determined on the presence of the barn, the treehouse, and the paddock. The removal would negatively affect our property value, the neighborhood appeal, views, drainage, slope, tax liability, 
and her rights as property owner. The property does, does exhibit exceptional, extraordinary, and unique physical circumstances. These circumstances are not applicable to other land in the same zoning district. The strict application of the code would create an undue hardship and deprive us of rights enjoyed by other properties. We're not responsible for the placement of the structures, and this is not a self-imposed hardship. We simply sought to further improve the utility of the property and applied for a permit. We do, however, wish to gain compliance with the municipality in order to maintain the beauty and the integrity of the property in the neighborhood. We have received six letters from neighbors in support of approving a variance, and several are present here tonight. I'd like to reserve my final minute for rebuttal. Thank you. Uh, the secretary has reminded me that I forgot to ask you to state your name and spell it for the record. Absolutely. My name is Christy, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-E, last of Lawton, L-O-U-G-H-T-O-N, and this is my husband, Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, same last name of Lawton. Thank you. Are there any questions of the applicant by the board members? Okay, I don't, I don't see any. Are there any questions of the applicant by the staff? Uh, no, I don't have any. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, at this time, the, uh, the public hearing is open. Is there anyone from the public wishing to testify in case 2020-0135? We have several people in the meeting. Okay, Amanda Jensen. Are you? Hello. Are you? Um, I'm you, Amanda Jensen, and I am. <laughs> I'm at one six zero. Are you testifying as an individual or a representative of a group? Um, just as an individual, as a neighbor. Okay, so you have three minutes. Okay. Um, I am at 16024 Winsong Drive. Um, I am right below um, Christy and Mike Lawton's property. And they came to us and asked us, you know, what our thoughts were when they received this letter. And every day when we drive by, our kids love going by the, you know, horse corral and the barn. And that tree house has been here for quite some time. We've lived here for six years. And... Um, our neighbors up the road homesteaded it, and they said it's been there, you know, way earlier than that. So our one concern about having um, to move the barn is we do get drainage from above us already. So if they do disturb the ground, you know, that can also alter, you know, any more water coming down the hill towards us. Um, and so that is a concern about having to move it when we don't find a reason why they need to. We are happy with it. It adds just a charm to our neighborhood that we absolutely love. That's why we picked this neighborhood, um, partly because of their property, and we were super excited to have a family move in with a small child because we do have small children as well. And I think having that, you know, treehouse up above is just wonderful. They can all play in it as they grow up. It'd be so sad to see it go. So I think that's all I have to add. Thank you. Are there any questions of Ms. Jensen by the board members? Okay, seeing none, thank you for your testimony. Is thank there you. Anyone, is there anyone else from the public wishing to testify in case 2020-135? somebody else anyone at all I guess
guess I forgot to ask the staff if they had any questions. Oops. Does the staff have any rebuttal? Uh, no, I do not. Uh, thank you for asking. Oops. We got somebody. Roger Holland. Too late? Okay. Sorry. Does the applicant have any rebuttal? We do not. Thank you. In that case, uh, we're going to close the public hearing and the matter rests with the board. May I have a positive motion, please? Mr. Hale. Through the chair, in the case of 2020-0135, uh, I recommend approval of the variant subject to staff conditions one and two on page five of the packet. Thank you. And Ms. Emerton seconds. Mr. Hale, will you speak to your motion, please? Yes, uh, through the chair, I I looked to uh, I looked at the property and it looks like the property is is shaped differently, quite a bit differently than most of the properties around there, and I think that plays into the fact that uh, there are some physical circumstances here, and uh, the findings from staff and A, I find that the the standard is met uh, just because you know most of the lots in that subdivision have a much more narrow frontage along the road. So the, the front setback is uh, significantly less square footage. If you look at the shape of this property and you, you put a 50 foot setback in there, that's quite a bit of additional encumbrance to the use of that property. So I think that there are extraordinary physical circumstances based strictly on that. Uh, the 50 foot, and it's it's much more uh, cumbersome than most of the neighbors have. Uh, for condition B, uh, strict applications, undue hardship. I believe this is met. Uh, 50 foot setback has less impact on the neighboring properties than it does on the the subject property. Uh, the strict application of the code creates more of an encumbrance on this property than it does most of the neighbors. So I think there are, it does create an undue hardship because there, it's just not treated uh, the same because of the additional square footage and limits their usage. For C, uh, the hardship is not self-imposed. I think the standard is met. It, property has changed hands three times since since the owners, uh, current owners have it. And, uh, you know, it, they had nothing to do with, with uh, the, the land the way that it is now with the uh, structures encroaching. So I, it's not self-imposed as far as I see, so the standard is that. I agree with staff on uh, condition or findings D through G. And then on H, uh, with the... Variance granted is a minim, minimum variance uh, to make it possible to use the land. I've, although there's room to relocate the, the structures, I, I think with the, the cost of things being so prohibitive, uh, because of the findings that I've outlined at A through C, I think the minim, minimum reasonable uh, variance would be just to leave it as it is and to grant the variance and, and let them use the, the property as they have been. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Emerton, do you have anything to add? Uh, thank you. I do intend to support my second as well, and I agree with the findings that Commissioner Hale laid out. Um, I would also add that some additional restrictions, or not, um, probably restrictions would be the local covenants that are, um, can, like, kind of help control where things were set when the property was built. So I, I do com agree, though, with everything Commissioner Hale listed uh, for findings. Are there any other comments by the board? Anyone else wish to chime in?
Seeing none, I guess we'll vote. Mr. Smythe? Yes. Mr. Hale? Yes. Ms. Savina? Yes. Mr. Lang? Yes. Ms. Emerton? Yes. Mr. Quinn? Yes. Acting Chair McKay? Yes. Thank you. Okay, it's unanimous and the motion passes and the variance is granted. Thank you all. Okay, so for the remainder of the agenda, um, there are no reports that I'm aware of. I have nothing. Secretary, Secretary has nothing. No committee. Board member comments. Does anyone wish to um, make a comment? Thank you, Mr. Smythe. And how about a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. This is Dave Hale. Thank you, Mr. Hale. And Monica Emerton seconds. We are adjourned. <laughs>